that Massachusetts- Just kiss him. Just kiss him. This politician was no- was no gentleman. You are reading me some revolutionary yaoi is what you're doing, Tim. You are reading me revolutionary war yaoi. Oh, chat, this is really doing it for me. With its heavy golden- watching me on YouTube, make sure to like and subscribe and leave a comment. I do answer those. And sometimes I answer them in a sassy way. We'll see what Tim Pool's been up to Over lately. Over opened fire into an FBI building in Cincinnati using a nail gun. After, I believe, an alarm was triggered, the man fled. This is a breaking story. Uh, I recorded a little bit earlier than when a it was published gun? when the story first broke. So there Wait, what? He took a... Wait, um... Wait, what is the, the deal with the nail gun? Shoots at the FBI. Okay, so he had an AR-15, but he used his nail gun to shoot at the FBI building in Cincinnati. And then flees. Maybe many more developments, but at the time of recording the segment, the man has not been apprehended. They say only contained. Reports He's been contained. Were that after he fled the building and was pursued, he began firing at police from a cornfield. Ladies and gentlemen, this is our cornfield. He's so happy. He's like, this guy is so great. He fired from a cornfield. Civil war. It is That's not what it looks because like. It's dudes was showing up with nail guns and, and firing at, at, at agents from a, from a cornfield. Like, you'll never take this cornfield. Uh... I'm sitting back oh watching God. movies and fantasizing or believing in things that uh, aren't in the realm of possibility. It's because no. what is happening oh, in this also, country. By the way, chat, by the way, chat, I just wanted to say meow, 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 meow. Okay, I just had to do that. I just had to do that before we get into our Tim Pool coverage because, you know, it's Tim Pool. It's Tim Pool. Is devolving. We will get into the breaking news from this story and I'll go through the details, but we have a lot more going on. FBI Director Ray has already condemned violent rhetoric. We're now hearing numerous reports claiming that on the fringe right, people are getting more and, and, and more violent in response to the- On the fringe right. That's what they say. They say it's they say it's crazy to come and attack the FBI building with a nail gun. They're calling it the fringe right. But there's really, is there anything so wrong with that? Oh my God, Tim Pool. Oh my God, you're so thirsty. FBI You're raid on so thirsty for this civil Donald war. Trump, but my friends, the raid on Donald Trump was the crossing of the Rubicon. That's not my quote. That's George Conway, a critic of Trump. Now, I did actually say who's that George Conway, Kellyanne Conway's husband, right? Who is like, wait, I'm trying to remember. Is George Conway like a Democrat or is he like, is he just like an anti-Trump Republican? I almost feel like he's an anti-Trump Republican. First tappers are going to clip that. Oh, my God. Well, they always do. They always do. Same thing. But I'm quoting him when I say it now, because the point is anyone can agree something has changed. And this is what we are likely to see. And I condemn it and reject it as we all. And I condemn it and reject it and add you and ask you to hand me that bottle of lotion. Right. That's her, that's what you that's the how people you people who have seen. Oh, my God, I condemn it and reject it, but it's getting me so hot. Oh, I condemn it and reject it. I condemn it. I condemn it. I disavow. I disavow. Yo, Tim Pool would love a civil war to happen if somebody else could take care of that for him. He can just like stay in his compound all safe. He could skateboard, you know, whatever. Right. You know, he, he wants somebody else to do a civil war. He's like, he's like poking the right. He's like, do a civil war. Come on. Do it. Do it. Tend to be the one saying you do not want it. But a lot of people keep saying. What do oh, you fuck do? Yeah, How I do forgot you about deal Kellyanne with this? Conway. Gentlemen, there is an election. I forgot about Kellyanne Conway's daughter coming up. Where potentially, potentially, Trump, potentially. MAGA supporting MAGA's. Republicans are about to sweep, and when they do, we may actually see something. I don't know. I don't know for sure. But right now, I have to question who would do this and why. Of course, on the right, Trump supporters are screaming "Fed" and "False Flag" because they do not support it convenient, isn't it? With only a few months to a midterm election,
that could see Republicans issuing subpoenas and investigating the bureaucratic state and other civil servants. Potentially what was done to Donald Trump, especially with the FBI, right? Only a few months before we're now seeing FBI's uh, uh, subpoenaing the cell phones of sitting members of Congress, so, raiding the in case you're you know keeping score at home. Here's what he's trying to do. OK, he wants you to think that he's a centrist and he just wants everything to be OK. And he just wants the right wing to understand the left wing and the left wing understand the right wing. And, you know, right. He's not he doesn't have any dog in this fight. He doesn't have any particular outcome. But if the lefties are going to go and investigate Donald Trump, which like the FBI are, are lefties. So there's a liberal organization, Tim. Oh, I'm not sure about that, my dude. I'm not sure about that. Right. But if that's going to happen, then sure as hell, when the Republicans take control, they're going to go and investigate all the lefties in the FBI. And, uh, you know, we're going to have some problems. And and Tim Pool doesn't want any of this to happen. Just please understand from the bottom of his heart. He hates the idea that there would be conflict in our nation. But, you know, if we don't support like a more you know t t more tolerant view of the criminal presidency of donald trump do you see what he's doing he's so disingenuous you know like i mean look at his look at his like you know look at who supports him look at who's watching him it's not like centrist it's not left wingers it's right wingers okay and anybody that watches tim pool and does not think that they see a right winger is somebody that just has their head so up, far up there or maybe up tim's that they can't see out of it, right? It's 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 ridiculous. It's pretty obvious what he is. But you know, you do have people trying to trying to still play games with that. For a long time he's been like, oh no, I'm actually a liberal. I'm actually a liberal, but I'm not one of these crazy liberals that's gonna cause the civil war to start when they when they go too far. Liberalism has gone too far. Right? That's his that's his whole deal and it, in a way it's a very twitch politics perspective like pretend to be on the left pretend to be or pretend to be a centrist and then just wring your hands about how bad the left is in order to make the left look really bad in order to pull things over to the right right it's it's a really cheap trick home of the former president we have seen members of his administration arrested convicted even shackled at the legs something dark is already happening now, again, this could be because someone snapped and they just said enough and they're and they're losing it. This, in my opinion, is a huge mistake. This will help the Democrats win. And I can only imagine. Actually, I'll put it this way. Many have speculated. Wait, Some news outlets have actually written op ed Wait, is he just mask off now? Like, you know, he's like, don't, don't do this. This will help the Democrats. Like, right. He pretends to be a lefty or he calls himself what a liberal. You know, he pretends to be on the left. Right. And he's right down like, don't do don't do this. It's going to help the Democrats. We're going to have the published op ed saying that the goal of the FBI raid may be to rile up Trump supporters and people on the right to engage in acts of violence. So it destroys the Republicans chance of winning in the midterms, because short of something like this, I don't see what they have. But this is exactly what the Democrats needed. Someone to get violent. I can't remember whose quote it was. It may be Noam Chomsky. They said, when you get violent, they know how to deal with you. It's when you're nonviolent, they don't know what to do. Because they have carte blanche on, on, on how to deal with violence. Something like this. You will see it plastered across every TV screen. Every billboard will say Trump supporters are violent criminals and terrorists, and they will use this as fodder as a weapon in November. But that's why I don't, I'm not convinced this is a legitimate political action. This person probably was just either deranged or was trying to hurt conservatives or Trump. But the reality is he may. <laughs> No, Tim, no. Did you hear that? He's calling it a, I don't know, maybe it's a false flag. Maybe it was a real liberal, a real, real liberal, a real insane liberal that was trying to make the Republicans look bad by pretending to be a Republican and having cultivated a right wing pedigree right that has like it did no it's antifa it's definitely it's definitely antifa doing this antifa it's antifa
may Who just knew? be deranged. The simple solution in the absence of evidence, ten, uh, the one that least makes amount, uh, the one that makes the least amount of assumptions may be correct. I think people may just be losing it. This country may be falling apart. And I will say it again. I think civil war is nigh. Or we're That's in why it. I've got my compound all set up, all stocked up with food. You know, I bought the food from Alex Jones's company. We can hold out there forever. We can skateboard every day, eat mashed potatoes at night. It's going to be great. We'll be watching the Civil War on cable news. You know, like it's... And it's fifth generation. He's so happy about like the idea sometime. of a civil war. He, you he know, a lot of people doubted me and this. they said that I was wrong and that was crazy. And I'm not saying definitively, I know for sure it will. I'm saying likely, likely. I'll just to clarify, I think we're heading in that direction and it just keeps escalating. But years ago, they said it would never even get to this point. And then January 6th happened and all of a sudden the Democrats changed their tune. The other night we had Naomi Wolf on the show. It's not just Operation me, Colorless it's people nervous. across the spectrum. Again, George Conway said... They've crossed the Rubicon and fired a nail Bruh. gun toward FBI personnel. This is interesting. Okay, can somebody tell me what the f a nail gun is and why somebody would shoot somebody with an AR-15? Why are they shooting people with a nail gun? What is the isn't a nail gun for construction? I mean, I'm sure it could hurt somebody, but like it doesn't seem like the proper tool for the, the job that they're trying to do there. But why are they using a nail gun? I don't get it. Why would he not use the rifle he had? That's what I'm saying, Tim. Perhaps because the nail gun is quieter. I'm not entirely sure. Oh, my God. Is, is it really? Is it really? I don't know. Flashing that an AR-15 style wild. rifle fired a nail gun into an FBI Cincinnati building Thursday morning, leading to a police pursuit. Wait, now, I'd also want to say into the building. Yo, I bet, I bet his defense is going to be like, look, I was looking at that building and those support beams looked like they needed a few extra nails. I was just trying to help the FBI. I wanted to make sure that they their support beams were going to stay right. You're going to need a new few new a few nails in there. I don't know. I don't know. What is why didn't they say he fired it at FBI personnel? At approximately 9.15 Eastern. Okay, he is looking for something fishy about this story. And he's will. He's like, he doesn't know what it is. But there's something, either the, either the dude is secretly Antifa and, and it's a false flag operation. Or, you know, the, this, he maybe he didn't, he was trying, maybe, maybe he didn't fire it at the, I don't know, I don't know. He wasn't really attacking them. I don't know. There's something weird, though, in, in Tim Pool's mind. There's something fishy. There's something weird going on here. There's something not right. You, can, you can't trust the mainstream press, right? The FBI Cincinnati Everything. field office. Yeah, right, Michael? An armed subject attempt to breach the visitor screening facility. FBI Cincinnati said in a statement, upon the activation of an alarm and a response by armed FBI special agents, the subject fled northbound onto Interstate 71. Clinton Co. Emergency Management Agency alerted that Interstate 71 was closed in both directions between about five exits. Law enforcement has traded shots with a male suspect who was wearing a gray shirt and body armor. The agency said in a statement, warning people nearby to stay inside and lock their doors. At about 1230, the agency said the suspect was contained but not in custody. Lockdown still in effect for one mile radius of Center and Smith Roads. Clinton Co. Emergency Management System, uh, Emergency Management Agency said on Facebook, remain vigilant. And if you are in the area, report anything suspicious to 911. This is a breaking story. So again, by the time you watch this, there probably will have been many updates you know, when the news broke, I immediately he sounds like he's do he's reading that like the I mean, the, what they're what they're saying and like what he's how he's reading it is very much like a 1950s remain vigilant public. We shall like the, the subject is not contained yet is contained, but not captured. Just got to to recording some remain vigilant. But uh, the Citizen. bigger story that I want to get to is where we're heading after the FBI raid on Donald Trump. So while this occurred, I was already putting together a segment. As many of you know, I talk about civil war quite a bit. It's a mean baby. <laughs> really? Really? You don't say. You don't say. I've never heard of this before. Basically, where uh, there's a really funny one, actually, where it's a guy and he's like stroking his beard and there's like a woman shaking her, her butt at him and they put a beanie on the woman and civil war on the butt. Oh. And the guy, it says me trying to live a normal life. And that was the gag, oh. like me being like civil war, but like, you know, a hot oh. woman shaking her butt. Anyway, I digress. You get the point. There's a reason. But I digress. I digress. Obviously, I'm very thirsty. Very thirsty indeed for a civil war. Reason why I talk about this. Because I read the news all day, every day. I read hundreds of articles per day. 
This is why I often remember a bunch of these random stories. If you watch IRL, you'll, I'll just like, be like, remember that story from 2013 where the, yeah, because I just read nonstop. When I see all the pieces laid out in front of me, reader. in front of me, and I see the national security experts saying, here's what happens in these places. When I've witnessed civil unrest and civil war in certain countries, and then I see these things happening, my friend, there, my friends, there's a reason why I'm saying I believe we are on track for a civil war still to this day. I think things are going to get much worse from here. There's a, there's, there's a bunch of different stories talking about this. Armed gunmen tried to break into the building. Apparently he did. The initial reporting said that he attacked the FBI building and fled, was shooting from a cornfield. Yeah. From what sources? Good question, V. They say the building is no longer... Uh, from a cornfield. Uh, from a cornfield of all things. A cornfield, I tell you. Your threat. Remain vigilant, citizens. The suspect is in a cornfield. He may be Antifa. CNN reported this just yesterday. Does he, does he have a black hoodie? Obviously. Violent rhetoric circulates on the pro-Trump internet following FBI search including against That's their uniform by uh -oh. Donnie O'Sullivan. Uh-oh. This is what the Democrats uh -oh. were praying for. And maybe <laughs> this some is speculated were, the FBI it's a little too convenient, don't you think? A little too convenient, I would say. This is going to happen. Oh, and maybe Democrats guy. were hoping it would because yeah, you know, they can oh. use this to try and win elections in the midterms. You see, we know that Democratic organizations have been funding the messages of pro-Trump candidates. And many asked why. The strategy is simple. Okay, now wait, they that, said, this part is kind of true, right? Now, he's not lying there, right? There has been some effort on the Democratic establishment to set themselves up for runs against far, you know, reactionary, pro-Trump, you know, kind of, you know, weird um, beliefs the election wasn't was stolen kind of kind of candidates right they they do they I, I think this part's true right and um you know it, obviously their strategy is they think they can knock these people off easier um the consequence of being wrong about that though is pretty bad and i would say that one thing that the democratic party the democratic establishment is really missing out here is that the public is not exactly in the mood for the establishment safe middle of the road candidate right there's not a lot of thirst for that candidate that candidate tends to put your side to sleep right a la hillary clinton and you know in, in hillary's case like kind of wakes up the opposition right and not that not that trump won the popular vote in 2016 because he didn't but the fact that he came close enough to winning the popular vote that he was able to win the the um electoral uh vote uh, the, 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 um, you know, electoral college, uh, score, like, right. Um, it says a lot about the, 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 the poorness of Hillary as a candidate, the lack of charisma she had, the degree to which the democratic establishment is beholden to whoever has the seniority and the, uh, you know, consolidated sort of networking power in that organization, which was Hillary Clinton. But Hillary Clinton was a, presidential candidate who excited nobody and who 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 was very easy for the republicans to rally against despite you know her being very conservative herself right she yeah she was a historically bad a historically weak candidate and i would say that i don't think that donald trump was some kind of juggernaut some kind of unexpected juggernaut i think he was a but he was a terrible candidate as well. I just think that Hillary Clinton found some way of, of matching his terribleness in, in her own uh, in her own right. MAGA candidates can't win a general election. And so they would prefer it if Trump's people won. And then in the general, the Democrats offered up a moderate option. Well, that idea sounds crazy because they're just propping um, up these ideas. Excuse me. Excuse me. Uh, yes, I ordered the moderate option. Is it like, why am I getting the extremist meal on this airplane when I clearly, I clearly checked the moderate option? I wanted the moderate option. Excuse me. Excuse me. Can I please get the moderate meal? Yeah. Is from Trump supporting candidates, right? Unless they intend to smear these candidates as insurrectionists and violent terrorists and criminals and scare the general public which may be about to happen. CNN reports, quote, lock and load was one of the top comments on an online forum dedicated to former President Donald Trump on Monday night. 
Soon after it emerged, his Florida Mar-a-Lago resort had been searched by the FBI. Other posts were more explicit. I'm not going to read these comments. I'm not going to I'm not going to read what they're posting. Violence should not be tolerated. And, oh I, and, I, and I genuinely mean that. He genuinely this is why, it. again, Trump supporters are calling these people feds because anybody who knows oh the God. game that's being played knows what's at he stake genuinely means in less it. Yo, than three months. No. They know the prize. I'll say this for everybody, too. The prize is sitting but three months away, and that is control of Congress. And it will be attained. I despise violence. I detest violence. I, I, oh my God, Tim, he said, he said, you're so transparent, bud. You are so transparent. And through peaceful means. Absolute and ghoul, the this guy. Power. Absolute ghoul. Unless, of course, Democrats are intent on making sure that doesn't happen. Why would someone, why would someone engage in this attack right before a midterm election? Why not earlier? Okay, well, maybe it's because it's a crazy guy and the feds went after Trump. I think that's a fair assessment. This guy's crazy. He went after Trump. Well, I think that's a fair assessment. What? 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 Bad news for Trump supporters. They're going to use this against you. They go to mention that combing through posts from certain individuals, they can see that people were making. Uh, and he gets to be like, I was against the violence. I didn't. I, I was I was telling the Republicans, don't do the violence. Don't do the violence. That's what the feds want you to do. It's a fed psyop to get you to do the violence. They want to get you to do the violence, but it's not really your fault because the feds are making it happen because they did this raid on Donald Trump. That was super unfair, but don't do the violence. And he's like, oh, you know, I was trying to tell him not to do the violence, but they they chose violence anyway. I, I, what could I do? What could I do? Um. Threats. One individual had been charged. Quote, we are seeing conspiratorial rhetoric from elected officials, political leaders and political entertainers that is fueling calls for real world violence, Jones said. The conspiratorial and divisive rhetoric from elected officials and others who should know better is continuing to undermine our institutions and democracy at an alarming rate. And I can only imagine these people are saying this. This is Daniel L. Jones, a former Senate investigator. They're twirling their mustache as they say it. Because they're doing the exact same thing. And they have been. It was the Democrats who claimed that the 2016 election was stolen. That they tried to block the electors. Then they come out and deny ever having been election deniers. Powerful tech institutions threaten to ban you if you challenge the election. From NBC, FBI's Ray denounces threats following search of Trump's home. Ray called threats circulating online against federal agents in the Justice Department deplorable and dangerous. Deplorable. Ray made the There's remarks following a news again. conference during a long planned visit to the agency's field office in Omaha, Nebraska, where he discussed the FBI's focus on cybersecurity. He declined to answer questions about the hours long search Monday by FBI agents of Trump's Palm Beach, Florida resort. It has been easy to find the threats and a call to arms in those corners of the Internet favored by right wing extremists since Trump himself announced the search of his Florida home. Reactions including the ubiquitous lock and load and calls for assassinations. Did you know that a, uh, a man tried to assassinate a Supreme Court justice? That's right. I don't care about the rhetoric. I mean, it's bad, but I mean to say, I don't care about these stories. It doesn't matter about what side you're on. Right now, I'm just as a human being. You need to understand. I'm just worried I might have been in um, Sea of Thieves or something. Someone tried to assassinate Brett Kavanaugh. They arrested him. Good. I'm glad they did. The AG would not go after people who are illegally protesting in front of ju judges' homes. We do have a restriction on that. And I understand why. There can be no First Amendment without the ability for justice to be, to be found. That was the argument that if a judge could be coerced, there's no justice, then there's no free speech. There's no constitution. Agreed. I don't want a judge to be like, I'm going to rule on a Supreme on, on a constitutional issue. And then someone shows up, protests, terrifies him, and then he changes his mind. I think that should be one of the one of the simple limitations. In defending free speech, Temple is telling you that you don't have the right to, you know, disagree with the highest court in our land in a way that 
a member of the court is going to experience, right? Now he's couching it in this idea of like terrifying and, you know, that, that this is like somehow a violent protest or something like that. Obviously, the law enforcement is going to punish somebody who who it does, you know, they're you protest the Supreme Court um, in a violent or um, or terrifying way. Right. But he, what he wants is for the, that protest just not to be able to take place at all for the Supreme Court to be able to, you know, pass. Um, to overturn precedents on political whim and for you not to have anything to say or do about it. That's the, that's the end of the line. Sorry, the Supreme Court decided you uh, don't have the right to privacy after all, right? We're going to just decide that that never happened and we're going to we're going to turn around and and you know interpret the law like this from now on, right? I'll stand against the first amendment to save the first amendment. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. What we're seeing now are extremists in any capacity on any side ramping things up and we need it to stop. You see, this is the worst possible thing for the right because they're poised to take the House and, and potentially the Senate. So none of this, it's all bad. But outside of that, I'll just tell you right now, man, I hope you've, you've prepared for what everyone keeps clamoring about. Since 2018, we've had articles now, talking about the potential for civil war because they didn't like Donald Trump because of the threat that Russia posed with an asset in the White House. Of course, I think that was all a lot of nonsense. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. What is he saying? He's saying that the Democrats were threatening civil war, right? Was there a talk of like New York and California seceding from the Union? Is is that was that was that a serious that was that something that was brought up on anywhere near the level that this kind of civil war talk, which is mainstream Republican discourse, thanks to like this guy pretending like they don't want it to happen all the while you know winking and nudging in, in a in a pretty blatant way like the right wingers know they, they they would not like tim pool if they didn't think that he was on their side right so however he wants to pretend to be a centrist or a lefty or whatever the he wants to you know whatever flavor of ideology he wants to paint himself with today right they know he's one of them sense and i think that was definitively proven now, we can see the escalation. The New York Times reports the FBI search ignited the language of violence and civil war on the far right. That's the story being put up by the mainstream press, the corporate propagandists. And the message we can oh, see from Unheard is... Oh, okay. So the court wants badly to maintain... Okay, so what you're talking about is that, like, certain aspects of the U.S. government are run by precedent and almost like you what would you call it like um like the senate right traditionally the senate has been run by a number of agreements just just lines that both parties say agree not to cross right there's no law against that there's no rule against that there's no, nothing telling them that they have to do it this way but they do it this way because they they want to think that they're like above they're not as partisan as the house right and that was the traditional way that the senate operated right so there were certain you know kind of deferences i guess shown um the court is another um Another like example of this, right? In that the court wants to present itself as objective and and beyond, um, not just uh, bias, but the appearance of bias or, or the appearance of um, partisanship, right? And yeah, somebody was mentioning Ruth Bader Ginsburg stayed on the court after, um, you know, until after the Obama um, presidency, in part um, because she felt like you know to to resign um at a specific time to ensure a uh partisan you know that, that, that the democrats didn't lose the partisan advantage or that they didn't like you know lose it any more than they would have she felt would have been you know politically biased on her um side and this the issue is the that the other side doesn't play with those kind of rules like right the republicans have realized that they can just forget about that kind of um, 
that kind of those kind of manners, those kind of um, that kind of deference, right? Um, that they, if they want to take control, all they got to do is be like, you know what? That it's not a rule. It's not a rule that you can't like refuse to vote on somebody's Supreme Court nominee. So guess what? We we refuse to vote on your Supreme Court nominee. We're gonna act like it's the precedent, like like that it's the custom to um, you know wait till the next election for that to happen, even though that's that's absolutely not true, right? And the Democrats not being willing to go there, the Democrats always wanting to take the high road, that does end up giving the Republicans a decisive advantage at a highly strategic time, right? So yeah, this is this is a real dynamic. That's that's you know, it's quite simple. America's tribes are ready for war. After Mar-a-Lago, the middle ground has been plundered. I want to read this and give you some historical context. It's, it's interesting. Uh, for, but first, I want to show you this from NPR yesterday. A Florida license plate has reopened the debate over the don't tread on me flag. When Florida Governor Ron DeSantis recently tweeted an image of what he said was a new state license plate featuring the coiled rattlesnake and the words don't tread on me, he said it sends a clear message to out-of-state cars. The imagery of, a, of the Revolutionary War era Gadsden flag dates to Benjamin Franklin, but has, for many, come to symbolize a far-right extremist ideology and the Stop the Steal movement. They have tried to associate the Gadsden flag, a flag of American history, with every... They have tried to associate the Gadsden flag or the people of this movement have associated themselves with the Gazden flag. Which is it, Tim Pool? Can you can you logic that out? Negative group imaginable. I remember years ago they were like, it's a white supremacist flag. It's it's a flag of America. The, the thing is a flag is whosoever flag picks it up, right? If it's used by white supremacists, it's a white supremacist flag. If it's used by, you know, January Sixers, it's a January Sixer flag, right? If it's, it, it's just like whoever, you know, that, that's the thing about a flag is, you know, whoever picks it up, you know, kind of, kind of owns it. They're trying to tell you that your history is extremist. If they believe that this is far right extremism, then my view is there is a parasitic growth, a brain slug. He has, oh my God, you're going to talk about brain slugs, Tim, please, please. Okay, so he has this image of that flag as being associated with the Revolutionary War. So that is what the flag means because it was, and I'm not sure if he's even right about this, right? I remember there being some little twist about the Gadsden flag. Like the Gadsden flag actually is not what people think it is, right? Um, but, you know, he, he's associating with the Revolutionary War and saying that is forever, therefore, a symbol of like, I support uh, not being part of the uh, British Empire and uh, instead, you know, operating uh, under our own nationhood. Right. That was what the revolution was about. You can't even really say that the revolution was about the current constitutional republic that the United States operates under because it wasn't a fait accompli at the time of the revolution that that was what, you know, was going to be codified, right? You know, the constitution had yet to be uh, written. The, the, the principles, I guess, of the Declaration of Independence maybe served as some, you know, guiding, uh, you know, some, some, some sort of a, a trailer of what the country was going to be about. But, you know, it, it had the actual release of the of the anime had not. Um, oh, my God. Chad, do you want to see that anime? The like United States you know, government anime, like, right? It's like, it starts off with like George Washington and, and you know, then moves on to like Thomas Jefferson and um, Aaron Burr and all that shit. You know, it's, it's like, I mean, do you want to see that anime? Would that be great? Is he arguing that things only exist? Yeah, 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 that's, that's where he's going, I think. Yeah, that would be, I mean, I think there was, there was some kind of show when I was little called like Liberty's Kids. Uh, has anybody ever seen this? It was like a cartoon. Yeah, it was definitely like a cartoon about these kids 
during the Revolutionary War. And it'd be like Ben Franklin would be there and he'd be like, I need you to carry the printing press from this area to this area in order to help the Continental Army. And they'd be like, yes, sir, Mr. Franklin, sir, we'll sure as hell help your printing press get to the place that it needs to be to print your revolutionary pamphlets. That's right. That's right. You know, <laughs> like something like, you know, wait, what's the guy's name? The pamphleteer guy, Thomas Paine. Yeah. You're like, Thomas Paine has got a fiery editorial that he's just written and we need to get it out to the, the continental patriots out there so that they can take heart. And yo, th this show is this, like, it was, it was like, so like, you know, yeah. The American Revolution, it's going to be cool that, yes, yeah, so that landowning men can take control of the, you know, I don't know. It was just, it was wild. It was wild, chat. I, I love that shit. S spreading inside this country, huge, demonizing. Huge Liberties Kids stand own over existence. here. And I, I see that just ending dangerously and dramatically. Does anybody know what I'm talking about? And it's worse. Liberties Kids. But here's where we may be going. From Unheard. Dominic Sandbrook writes, Thursday, 22 May, 1856, was a sunny, sleepy day in Washington, D.C. as Preston Brooks, the Democratic representative from South Carolina's 4th District, strolled into the Senate chamber. The air felt hot and heavy. The Senate's business had wound down. The galleries had does. almost emptied. Brooks glanced they up do. and waited for the last spectators to leave. It was important, he thought, that no ladies were present to watch what he had planned. What? What? Oh my God, what's happening? What? He beat a congressman with his cane? Wait, who did? Like Aaron Thomas Paine? Like beating somebody with a cane, when I think about that, damn. Damn. <laughs> That's some brutal sh When he was satisfied. Because usually I think of a cane as being like a, an, there's like a, it's like an old dude with a cane and it's like, you know, I mean, like, you know, he needs it to walk and stuff. I don't think about like the old dude could take his cane and just go whack, whack, whack on me. But like, yeah, I guess the old dude could 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 whack on me with the cane if he really wanted to. Um, uh, the story that Tim is telling, he beat this guy. Oh, wait, I'm not even listening to her. I thought you were talking about the Revolutionary War people because I got so in. I just had a trip of like liberty's kids i just like had a flashback to being a kid watching that cartoon of like you know yes we will help the revolutionary war people won't we yeah we sure will high five right and um and now like he's okay so that's tim tim's talking about beating some dude with a cane till the cane broke oh my god okay i gotta pay more attention apparently Walked over to the desk of massachusetts republican senator charles apparently. Sumner who was busy writing and barely even looked up. Between the two men, there was no love lost. Brooks, who walked oh with a cane after When you say it that way, you make it sound like there was like actual tension. Do you know what I'm saying, chat? When you say between these two men, there was no love lost. When, like, didn't, did that phrase ever f with you? Like there was no love lost sounds like they love each other, right? No love lost, they, they keep in the love. So they're in love, right? No love lost. Is that not what lo no love lost means? It seems like no love lost should mean love check. Yes, we have love. We have love. We have love. We have love. And so like, right? There, <laughs> there's no love lost. I don't know. I don't know. Been injured in a youthful duel was a passionate defender of slavery. Sumner, by contrast, was, was one of the nation's most outspoken abolitionists. You are well reading me some Revolutionary Yowie is what you're doing, Tim. You are reading the Revolutionary War Yowie. Only days earlier, he had delivered a blistering speech mocking Brooks' cousin. A blistering cousin. speech? It was f blistering. It was so hot. It cinched my Senator eyebrows. Andrew Butler, as a hapless Don Quixote-style knight devoted Look, to... It wasn't just flaming. It was blistering, okay? It was blistering. The harlot slavery. To Brooks, the speech seemed an intolerable affront. At first... He had considered challenging Sumner to a duel, but decided against it on the grounds that the Massachusetts... Just kiss him. Just kiss him. ...his politician was no, was no gentleman. Damn. But he remained determined to take his revenge. He is no gentleman. I, no, I know that you are no gentleman. Up, oh my Brooks God, this spoke. is hot. Mr. Sumner, I have read this your speech hot. twice over carefully. It is a libel on South Carolina and Mr. Butler, who is a relative of mine. At that, Sumner tried to rise. But Brooks was too quick for him. He lifted his thick gutta percha cane. Oh my god, he lifted his thick cane! Oh, 
Oh, chat, this is really doing it for me. With its heavy golden this top, this is really and doing it, it for savagely me. Savagely down on Sumner's savagely head again and again. Tim, do you know what you're doing? Do you do you understand what you're doing? You were like the best slash fiction author ever. What the hell? Sumner fell. Blood trickled down. Fell it? No, no. Fell into his arms. Like, please, come on. His face. He was trapped behind his desk. He could not get up. Still, the blows rained down. Brooks lashing away like a man possessed. Uh, this Sumner is was unconscious bit, now. This is a, at last. This is a little too intense for even me, chat. For even me, he beat him. It's got his thick cane ready. Some of Brooks' colleagues oh my managed God. to pull him off. A pool of blood spread across oh no. the floor of the Senate. Okay, wait. Although Charles Sumner so, didn't. like, this did happen, right, in Congress. This was, uh, like, a real thing. Like, somebody got their beat with a cane and, and the old it wasn't like the you know it was like you know like the in the beginning of the uh the country right the the early days of the united states right die that afternoon the sheer violence of the assault struck many americans even at the time as a terrible harbinger of so, the yeah, horror i guess that's funny because like like i was just saying about the senate having these rules of like you know just good like good manners like you know just kind of like you know they're they're very mr rogers traditionally in the senate they're very you know hello hello neighbor you're a democrat i'm a republican let's let's talk about our feelings and go to the land of make-believe together and write like revolutionary war yaoi about our like, I don't know. Sorry, chat. This is just, this is doing it for me. Like I said, this is really doing it for me. Head. But while thousands of anti-slavery northerners joined rallies in Sumner's support, the reaction in the South was very different. Ordinary people sent Brooks hundreds of new canes to replace his own shattered weapon. One was inscribed, hit him again. Many Southern politicians insisted that Sumner had exaggerated his injuries, dismissing the fake news of the abolitionist media. And on the fire-breathing wing of the Southern press, there was no doubt about who was really in the wrong. Brooks's attack was good in conception, better in execution. So, and best of all, in it's a common right-wing thing now, right? To talk about the Democratic and the Republican parties as if the realignment had never occurred, right? The realignment was LBJ um, choosing to not just pa not just like support civil rights. But to kind of bring it into being by by doing the making the maneuvers that he needed to and and lbj was a senate guy right so he knew how to work the senate right he and 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 he worked the senate and and he got the civil rights act and a bunch of other stuff passed right when this happened any democrats that were vaguely pro south that's when that's the change started there was a while where there was like a wing of the democratic party called the democrats which were like democrats plus racism yeah yeehaw. no not yeehaw, right and then that like you know that the last gasp of that probably is was it wallace wallace ran for president in oh my god i don't know if it's 68 or 72 but it's one of those years and yeah you know he he was like you know shot at some point but um he he was the standard bearer for the dixiecrats right eventually all of the southern pro-southern you know kind of racist like um you know openly racist i guess um democrats because you know like it's not like they it's not like there there wasn't still racism right in the democratic party after this right all uh you know hillary clinton Hillary Clinton's super predators, uh, Bill Clinton's attacks on sister Solja. Yeah, there was definitely racism in the Democratic Party, right? Um, but the, the racism wasn't open in the way that it had been. It wasn't like, you know, kind of, you know, hark racism that harkens back to the Confederacy. It wasn't that kind of stuff. Because that's what the Democratic Party had been before. And there was a realignment that, that took place after, you know, after that legislation was passed by Johnson. The Republicans love to pretend that this never happened, that the Democrats back then are, you know, they're the same people, you know, like, right? And which doesn't even make sense because you're talking about generations after generations. There's no way they could be the same people, but they'll try to play this like this, that the Republicans are the party that really want, like, you know, black people to be free, like, hence Lincoln freeing the slaves, and that the Democrats just change their tactics. And you're like, you know, instead of forcing them to, you know, into slavery, let, let us give generously of welfare and destroy their families and that's the
Repub that's legit a mainstream point of view in the Republican Party, right? I'm not even kidding. I'm not exaggerating. This is really what Republicans think. This is really how they conceive of things. You know, D Dinesh D'Souza's got a bunch of document, not a bunch of, at least one documentary on this. And and this is something that the Repu it's 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 asinine. But the Republican Party has by and large come to accept it. Consequences declared the Richmond Inquirer. Ideally, it said the vulgar abolitionists of the Senate should be lashed into submission. Today, historians see the Brooks Summer oh, confrontation. Altogether, there's been six or seven realignments, you mean, throughout the history of the, the milestone of the United States road to the Civil War, encapsulating the collapse of civility, the triumph yeah, yeah, of yeah, tribalism. Exactly. The prison system is the perpetuation of slavery, the one like exception that was made, right? And the disappearance of the political middle ground. I've been thinking about it a lot over the past couple of years. And I thought about it again this week amid the frenzied reaction to the FBI's raid on Donald Trump's home in Mar-a-Lago, Florida, where he's alleged to have taken and even tried to destroy confidential government documents. Right to destroy. Oh, my God. He's flushing it down. Put aside. He's you flushing can. it down. Your own views about the rights and wrongs of the FBI raid. Perhaps it really is a sign of the overreach of the deep state. The deep state. To smear and undermine a decent oh, American patriot. Oh, the deep, deep state. But perhaps it's a welcome Look, if reminder you're going to talk about nope. thick canes and deep states, like, you, you're going to have to, like, I don't know. Like, you're going to have to warn me, okay? I, I wasn't ready to get into this state of being hot and bothered um, today. Uh, you should have warned me, Tim. Nobody, not even a former president, is above the law. Perhaps you think Donald Trump isn't the kind of man who would trample roughshod over rules and conventions. Perhaps you simply can't imagine him making off with classified records and trying to flush them down the toilet. Or perhaps you think he is, and you can. But this really isn't the, uh, this isn't really the issue. Does anybody really see the fate of Donald Trump's paperwork as the most pressing challenge facing the American Republic? The more interesting question, as with, this, there we go. As with the caning of Charles Sumner there in 1956, is what the whole imbroglio tells us about the health imbroglio? or otherwise of American politics. I thought it was like an imbroglio. Wait, am I thinking of a singer? What is it imbroglio? Chat, how do you say this word? As soon as news of the FBI raid broke, Republicans almost unanimously rushed to denounce the agency's abuse of power and to defend the former president as a victim of a witch hunt. Would they, I wonder, have said the same thing if, say, the FBI had raided Hillary Clinton's house in search of her- Imbruglio. It's like an imbruglia. Imbrug it's like a kerfuffle or a, What's another name for this? Like a- Oh my god, there's like weird word. All the words for this thing are like weird words that aren't usually used that much. Controversial private emails? I doubt it. Imbruglio. It's like, that's a, a pretty there. old school word. And say, the context missing, of course. For those that are but I'm not, saying it not wrong. I think I'm saying it like the historically singer. on either side, but may find themselves more aligned with Republicans simply due to having read the news, is that Hillary Clinton was investigated peacefully. They didn't raid her house. They took the emails, they reviewed them, and they found that she did have confidential information. She wasn't charged. Donald Trump was subject to a false FBI investigation, tens of millions of dollars in Russiagate. The context is very different, good sir. Wait, I okay, you. so what you're asking, what you're proposing, Tim, is that like every president should undergo a certain amount of investigation and that should be equal regardless of whether that president has or, or I mean, in this case, you're talking about uh, Clinton was wait, she was secretary of state. I was about to say vice president, but no, that was Joe Biden. Joe Biden was the vice president. Hillary Clinton was the secretary of state. And didn't she also have a different, like she was secretary of state for one of Obama's terms and she did something else in the other. Maybe she just retired in 26, 2000 and wait, what would it have been like 2010 or something? Or I don't know. Um, but um, but yeah, this is acting like like that any political figure of equal stature that either runs for president or becomes president should be a, a subject to the exact same amount of investigation, regardless of the fact that different criminal behavior or suspicious behavior might actually require different levels of investigation, right? You know, that, that something like a, a raid is um, ordered on the concern of evidence being destroyed. 
were it to be a request of uh, Mr. Trump, could you please hand us over these documents that we know you have, right? And then have to have Trump be like, I don't have any documents. I don't have any documents. I don't. And meanwhile, it's flush, 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 right? See, you, you see the, the issue, right? There's a smidge of William F. Buckley. Oh, in Tim Pool, like a stupid uh, person's version of a smart person. Is this how he talks all the time? I guess so. Yeah, it's be, be, if you're a note. OK. If you're saying that you think his presentation has changed, I agree. I agree. I think he's, he, yeah, he's like channeling something. Imbruglio. Imbruglio. Okay, okay. Please read the history of the Donald Trump presidency, Russia Gate, Ukraine Gate, the lies and the smears to understand why people do not trust what happened with the FBI. He continues, it works the other way around too. The same Democrats glorifying in Mr. Trump's embarrassment today would have a, would have been appalled if the FBI had applied the same tactics to Mrs. Clinton yesterday. You don't hear many liberal Democrats wondering if the FBI was a bit heavy handed, just as you don't find many conservative Republicans insisting that nobody is above the law. And you don't find many pro uh, slavery Southerners mm. in 18, 1856 rushing to condemn Tucker. Preston Brooks. OK, in the 2020s, as in the 1850s, the tribalism is total and partisanship is all partisanship. wrong. What he's right about. Partisanship. We're on a dangerous path. We need to do Why whatever. Why can't we get back to that revolutionary war spirit of, of like, of camaraderie, of being all together? It's like I'm looking through life through my own eyes. Oh my god, I can't remember. Oh wait, I gotta, I gotta figure out these lyrics. As we can to prevent. I gotta figure out these lyrics. From de-escalating further. We should all condemn the man who went to the FBI office. All. Why? If Republicans do win in November, they can use the powers of the purse to defund. They can hold the FBI accountable in a way that a single lunatic cannot. But if lunatics like this get violent, you will not win and people will vote for law and order to stop it. While I agree with the interest in, interesting context here at Unheard, the both sides of them unfortunately is incorrect, but an interesting point on the left chat. I'm looking through at life through my own eyes, searching for a hero to idolize, feeling the pain as innocence dies. I'm looking at life through my own eyes. I take my heart into battle, give that freedom bell a rattle, get my independence signed, declare it on the dotted line in Philadelphia. Freedom ring. Patriotic voices sing red, white and blue. Never give up. We represent America. Yeah, that's uh, is that in the end, you need only stand back and realize that something is standing before us. I'm hoping and praying for a brighter day. I listen to my heart and I obey. How can I see it any other way? I'm looking at life, looking at life through my own eyes, through my own eyes. Oh my God. Perhaps you agree. I love the rap. It's a double standard. And we've read the news. We understand this. It is not just Republicans. Naomi Wolf, who said they are criminalizing being Republican, is a liberal, a feminist. And a feminist, you don't say a histo historically active Democrat. But now things have changed when people like Naomi Wolf can come on Timcast IRL. She came on the other day. Watch the show. Isn't Naomi Wolf kind of a crackpot? Um, oh, maybe I shouldn't say crack. Maybe I should say like damaged um, ceramic good. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and say they're trying to yeah. criminalize being a Republican and a civil war yeah. is coming. It is not tribalism. It is a death cult and everyone else. And Trump has his sycophants and Trump has his cult, but they are not prominent. What's happening now, regardless of what you think is right or wrong, is that escalation is upon us. Escalation is upon us, my friend. Of what today's successors to those escalation is upon us. Antebellum Southern editorialists are thinking. I turned on Fox News. First up was the conservative classical historian Victor. He is Davis trying Hansen. to be like Biden administration is using Soviet style tactics to cry. He does seem to be trying. He he does seem to be trying to be like a little bit more like um a little bit more buttoned down, a little bit more like intellectual, you know, sounding like you know he's trying to draw this like you know he he's always done this kind of back and forth thing, right? You know where where he's like talking about one thing and he's talking about another thing. He's trying to pull this idea of the the fight on the Senate floor into his discussion here, right? And and still. 
trying to pretend not to be a sycophant of Trump himself, which uh, it's a little bit doubtful, my dude. It's a little bit. Yeah, what exactly? What's beneath that be beanie? And is it a Trump hat? Is it a red f Trump? Hat? I think it's I think he's just got a MAGA hat under there that's what that's how he hides it listen he's had a maga hat under his beanie for since before maga was there but since before trump was like you know the whole the whole weird uh movement right Gosh, it's political there's opponents. a big void there's just nothing Read the banner at the bottom of the screen hansen was in no doubt the fbi raid was a plot by the democrats running the national security state the plot they believe they're morally the superior to america and therefore any Yeehaw. means are necessary to justify or justifiable right for their morally superior ends he said grimly, right now, we don't have the rule of law in Washington. That, I thought, is a pretty bleak thing to say about your own government. An odd thing, too, since the director of the FBI, Christopher Wray, Ray is an avowed card-carrying Republican. But of course, if this man who wrote this knew anything, he'd know that Liz Cheney is as well. And she has almost no support from Republicans. I had a quick look at his biography. It turns out he went to the same New York private school as Donald Trump Jr., then the same Massachusetts boarding school, Phillips Academy, as the two Bush presidents. He served in Bush's administration and was appointed to run the FBI by Donald Trump himself. That's correct, but it doesn't change the facts about what's happening. Perhaps it was because Donald Trump wanted to fire the man, or perhaps because Donald Trump knew he made a mistake. But I want to cite Naomi Wolf, who made an interesting point yesterday. She said, walk backwards, work backwards. When looking at these things, don't, don't listen to why, why they, they claim to be doing it. Go backwards from what they did. It's interesting. I take a look at where we are now, what the results are, and then I walk backwards. And I don't think justifications matter. Of course, any person who commits a crime will make an excuse. I'm innocent, I'm being framed, or I had no choice. Often there will be crime. Ocasio-Cortez famously said, because people need bread. Pretty sure the dude who is, you know, like stealing a cell phone, it's not about bread. But for some people, when they steal bread, it is. You work backwards. When you take a look at the damage being done, the escalation, and the potentiality for real violence, you, you ask why it happened. Certainly people know the outcome of the actions they take, especially the FBI who's been tracking all of this violence, right? Mm. The FBI has been yeah. tracking this violence. They know, don't they? It sounds then, when you work backwards from where we yeah. are, history starts to paint a different picture. We are in the thick of things. We go day by day. The revolutionary period was over 20 years. The thick of things, just like that thick cane. Just like that thick, thick cane. The Boston Massacre and the Boston Tea Party were years apart. Years. But when we look back at history, it's condensed. What I mean to say is, we are in uncondensed history today. Days uncondensed? go by with no news. Nothing happening. And like frogs in a pot, we boil, not realizing just how insane things have gotten. Who so did I like write this article? Yeah, backwards. I didn't even. And I put it this way. Go Is back and scroll time, back up. Five years. If I did, and back then I told you. That there was going to be a civil war. Here is 2022. War. It is August. A man armed with a rifle enters an FBI building and fires a nail gun at FBI staff. The Democrats have just expanded, voted to expand the IRS by 87,000 agents. The president's home was raided by the FBI. Members of, of his administration have been arrested and convicted. One man was shackled at the feet. If I told you those things, if I said on January 6th of 2021, Naomi Wolf is one of the funniest wrong people around. Hundreds, I need to nearly 1,000 individuals entered the Capitol grounds, many of which storming in, seeking an end to the electoral vote count because they believe the election was stolen. Would you believe me? Of course you wouldn't. And I know you wouldn't. Not all of you, but many of you. How do I know this? In 2018, I said, we are on track for a civil war. And the response I received from everybody was, Tim, you're insane. Antifa fighting the Proud Boys is not a civil war. It's weirdo lunatics. And I said, look at history. Look at where this leads to. People just said, no. I remember hearing from prominent conservatives saying the security state is too strong to allow anything like that to happen. My response, what happens when the culture war reaches the, the highest level war. of government? Sure, right now war? the government isn't the engaged culture in a culture war. war. It was a little bit with Donald Trump. 
but it wasn't as fractured. A little bit with Donald Trump, a little bit, Russiagate, for sure. just a little bit, just a Listen, little what bit. Happens when half of the FBI is woke and half the FBI is anti-woke. Half the, they're woke. Then you, you get the FBI down. is woke? And people said that you, can never happen. You think the FBI is woke? Tim, what are you talking about? It won't happen. The FBI. It did happen. That's why they it's, raided it's, his it's thing. Happening they were around woke. Us. It's easy to look back at the past several years and pinpoint all of these key moments that signify we are in a historical moment. In 50 years, they will look back on these days and it will be condensed down into a neat little one page article. What caused the Second Civil War? I don't know if it escalates to the point where we will refer to it that way. But enough has happened. Enough has happened that we are getting close to 1860s. Bleeding Kansas. I believe it was seven years that led up to the Civil War. It was a state civil war in Kansas over whether or not they would be a slave state or a free state. John Brown was particularly active. He walked up and blasted a man in the face. Interesting. In Portland, interesting, interesting, interesting that he would blast a man. A out guy of walked up to a man named Aaron Danielson and put two in his chest for no reason other than as we as we believe he was a Trump supporter. They this is the guy that Trump like you want to talk about assassinations like Tim, these same agencies under Trump, like basically assassinated this person. They did not want to hear what he had to say. They did not want to, you know, let the, the you know, have this person, you know, try this person in court and, you know, right. Like, like um, the right wing has this narrative that says that, like, this was like a guy just shooting somebody for being a Trump supporter. Um, I believe at the time when this event happened, there were right wingers invading Portland with trucks, with people on the back of those trucks who had frozen paintball guns, right? So shooting frozen paintball guns at passersby, you know, just like riding their, you know, like they, this was like an invasion of Portland and he wants to portray it as like, oh no, but what about this guy that like killed somebody for no other reason than that he's, he was like, he was like, hey dude, do you support Trump? And the guy was like, yeah, I think Trump is pretty good. Oh yeah, and blows the guy away, right? That is not what happened. That is a vast distortion of what happened. And as far as what, you know, really did happen and on some level, it seems like the, the same, uh, you know, three letter organizations did not want us to know, right? They made sure that there was nothing left of that man to go to court and to, you know, you know, tell, you know, his story to, to say what's happened. There, there was no there. Yeah, that did never yelled something like we got one here and then he just drew up and killed him. The DOJ under Trump hunted down this man and killed him. They said he was going for his weapon. Maybe. I don't know. All of these things. A couple of years ago, I think it was, a man showed up to an ICE facility in Tacoma <laughs> with a ghost gun, a rifle, and fire bombs. And he attempted to firebomb an ICE facility. He was killed. Numerous instances like this have been occurring. So we may be in the bleeding Kansas phase of a pre-civil war. Or maybe we're able to stop it. The fourth turning. Or maybe you're just trying to turn this into something that it's not for your own reasons, right? Like, what if we look back at, like, why did the Second Civil War start? And it was because douchebags believed Tim Pool. You know? Because you know one great way to get a civil war to start? is to say that a civil war is starting. And I think that's what Tim Pool's doing. If there's a civil war starting, it's because heads like this are fomenting it, okay? Feeding into it, are justifying it, and are hiding behind this fake ass, you know, fish hook, which like, I mean, like, no, come on. Like, you're, you're not even like, you're not even fooling anyone on the right, let alone, you know, anyone on the left, right? You're like Tim Pool saying that he's a centrist prescribes a major moment he's got no dog in, in this fight years. every 80 years he doesn't like the radical democrats and he doesn't like the trump people either sure 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 this country him. goes through a tumultuous period the fourth turning we had the war for independence 80 years later we had a civil war 80 years later we had world wars one and two and that's amazing that's amazing that's world a lot war of wars one. 
That's a lot of wars. Of war. Who would have thought it? I bet a bunch, a bunch of people were like, there's never going to be four wars. What are you talking about? And like, sure enough, boom, 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 four wars. There you go. Oh my God, Tim. Or I should say it was about six, between 60 and 80 years. So that was a long period of chaos, international chaos. Maybe it's wrong. Maybe someone was like, hey, this happened three times. Maybe it'll happen a fourth. Not perfect speculation. Or maybe with everything we're seeing, <laughs> we're headed towards something dark. He's now like, he goes, boy, I sure hope so. He's going to make some, for some damn interesting coverage. He's on to make his both sides of some point. And he concludes by saying, even at a grassroots level, you can see signs of trouble. Writing for Unheard in January, the essayist, essayist James Pogue reported that in his rural Northern California county, there is a very tot uh, totalizing war of worldviews, touched off by the pandemic and resistance to expert advice and state action, led by a militia aligned faction that thinks the local government betrayed the county's free living values by participating in California's COVID protocols. There haven't, Pogue noted, been any bombings or shootings, but there have been fights and much of the local police force is more or less openly sympathetic to the radical faction. The right in this country is now almost entirely alienated from the other structures of government, and it is hard to see how the situation could change. Too bleak? Perhaps. When I visited America before Easter, it didn't feel like a country on the brink. The sun shone. Shops were busy. People wandered happily about, as friendly and hospitable as ever. In two weeks, I didn't hear a single remark about politics, nor did I see a sing single MAGA hat or a Trump shirt. And this is in Florida. But I would probably have said similar things in the summer of 1856, too. The sun often shines before the storm. And perhaps, good sir, you would be standing atop the hillside overlooking Fort Sumter, along with all the other good picnic-going Americans who could not believe a civil war would erupt. And perhaps you were wrong. Perhaps things are darker than you realize.